In this video, I want to share with you my key binds that I'm using inside Veeam. A lot of people asked me what are my key binds and how I am using Veeam so efficiently. This is why in this video I want to share with you all my key binds that I am using every single day, so you can also use it in your configuration and maybe improve your Veeam workflow. I am writing the code fully only inside terminal, and here I am starting in the empty terminal. The first thing that I need to do is open a Tmux because I am working and create all the steps and projects inside Tmux. This is why. I am simply writing T and I am hitting enter. And as you can see here, I am not getting just inside an empty state, I am getting all stuff which was previously opened inside this project. And here I have three tabs. First of all, the tab with the editor, secondly, the tab with web server, and the third tab is a shell. And as you can see here, I am using control space and then one, two, or three to change the tab. If I want to switch between projects, I am clicking control space and then S, and it opens the list of all projects which are now active on my machine. For example, here I can select the project with my website, and here it is also opened. But now let's focus on Vim key binds. After I'm jumping to the editor, here you can see the list of the files. And actually, this is the DFX plugin, which allows me to open in every single buffer the file tree. Here we have just a single empty buffer. This is why, by default, we are opening here a file tree. Now, here we can select different files, and I'm using here J and K to go up and down. If I want to jump inside directory, for example inside source, I am hitting O, then maybe we need to open app folder, and inside let's say that we want to open our app component JS. Again to navigate the file, I am using here J to go to the bottom, and K to go to the top. If I am going right, I can write L a lot of times, or I am using H to go left. But obviously if we have a huge file, it is not really comfortable to go line by line which means typically you want to jump a bigger part of the screen. This is why I am using here Ctrl D, and as you can see I have a big jump, or I am using Ctrl U to jump upwards. So typically inside code I will just click Ctrl D, Ctrl D, Ctrl D to go to the bottom and see what code I have, or Ctrl U if I want to see some code on the top. Another two really nice hotkeys for navigation is GG, which is going to the first line, and Shift G, which is going to the last line. When when I'm navigating inside a lot of code, it is really nice to jump between open and close bracket or open and close tag. For example, here I can click percent to jump between open and close div tag. And as you can see here, it is easy to read because here we don't have a lot of code. But if we are talking about bigger amount of markup, here we are jumping between div banner and here div on the bottom. And essentially it is not comfortable to just go like here and then go to the bottom to see the close tag. This is not efficient. With percent we can simply jump between open and close tag. And exactly in the same way I can jump between open and close bracket, which I use really often. For example here we can jump to the closed bracket of the class, or here we can jump between different brackets inside combine latest. As you previously saw, when I jumped between two files, I opened a file tree, and I'm doing this with space and then F. It opens the file tree in the current buffer, so I don't have a file tree somewhere outside like you typically have for example in VS Code, I am opening it inside the buffer. And it is extremely important because it allows me to know exactly where I want to open the buffer. For example here I have a split, and if I'm clicking here space and def, I'm opening buffer here in this specific split. It is not somewhere on the left where we need to go, this is exactly this split, and I can continue navigation exactly in this split. And if we are talking about splits, I have really nice hotkeys for them. First of all, I can hit VV, and then we have a vertical split. Or I can click SS, and then it is a horizontal split. And additionally to that, if I need to close the buffer, I just use Shift Q. So the first thing how I am working with files is file tree. But it is not all, I also use buffers a lot. Here I can click space B, and it opens for me all buffers that were opened previously. 
So here we have just files that were already opened and we can jump with errors up and down and select the specific file that we want to enter and then just hit enter. So buffers is much better choice if you want to jump to the file that you already opened. One more nice hotkey together with buffer is jumping to the last buffer. And here I can just hit space space and I'm jumping to the previous buffer. I'm hitting space space again and I'm changing the file to HTML again. So to work with files we already used file tree and buffers, but it is not all. I also use fuzzy finder a lot, because essentially if you already know the project it doesn't make any sense to use file tree. You can simply type the file that you need. For example here I can hit Ctrl P and I'm getting a fuzzy finder of all files inside the project. And let's see here that I'm looking for the interface of the article. I'm just typing here article interface and it doesn't really matter how much I typed because it is a fuzzy finder. It finds the word article and then int in all these occurrences. And as you can see here it is fuzzy which means it is not what we typed. Here for example we have article then i and then nt. It really helps tremendously to find correct file. So in our case we wanted article interface and we can simply open it from the list. Now let's talk about TypeScript and I'm using COC plugin to implement all this language server stuff and TypeScript is one of them. And typically I use several things. First of all here what we want to do, we want to know the type of specific property. For example here we can hover on profile interface and click Shift K. And as you can see here we have a nice hover tooltip where we can get information what it is about. For example here what we can do, we can hover on our store and just click Shift K. And as you can see here we see that this is a class store which gets a generic which is an object by default. Or here we can hover on our get article and get the information what this section does. Additionally to that I use heavily auto import which means if here on the top we don't have this import so I will delete it. Here I can just hover the line with the arrow, which means here we don't have this interface and then just click in GF and it will autocomplete this import and put it here on the top. Also as you saw just a second ago I removed this import. How did I do that? I used for this DD to remove the line. And typically we are removing lines a lot, which means I can simply write DD then DD again, DD and it will simply remove lines one by one. But let's say that we removed one line and it was a mistake, how we can get it back? So we want undo, this is why it is you. As you can see our import is back. Additionally to that it is important to remember that dd or delete line is not just deleting, it is cutting, which actually means now we have this line inside our buffer and we can paste it. So I can just hit here p and this line will be pasted. The next thing that I'm using heavily is working with surrounded elements. What does it mean? Here let's say that we want to write something else and not void. We don't want to just remove it symbol by symbol, we can simply write here change in word and it will completely remove a word and put the cursor to the place where we can start typing and I can just write here string and we are good to go. So every single time when I need to change just a word I'm writing here ciw and it will remove a word and put a cursor so we can type something. And additionally to change in word we have other stuff, for example delete in word will just remove it but it won't put this cursor for typing. And now we can use this feature not only with words but also for example with brackets. We can also use here change in and I have an open bracket and it will remove everything inside this bracket so I can type something here. And it is even better in this case because as you can see here inside constructor this is quite a lot to remove. But I can type here delete in round bracket and it will simply remove everything inside this round brackets. And here we can do exactly the same but remove the content of our function. So I'm writing here delete in bracket and it will remove everything inside this function. And actually it works even with text which is really awesome. We can jump back inside our HTML file and let's say we want to remove everything inside this banner. I can simply type here delete in tag so it is t and it cuts everything inside this banner with correct indentation. So it is not like you are selecting every single line here and then you need to check your close tag so you won't remove something that is not needed to be removed. You simply always cut it correctly. And again we have here deleting tag, changing tag, whatever you need. 
Now let's talk about visual selection. Sometimes we need to visually select something and then remove. And for this I'm using Shift B to start selection. And as you can see here now it is highlighted and I can go with K or J to the top or to the bottom to select what I want to remove. After I'm sure that I selected everything, I can simply hit D and it will remove this part. Exactly in the same way we can select symbol by symbol, but I'm not really using it that often. We can start here by using V and then just use L to go to the right and select what exactly we need. And then we can simply hit change to cut everything and jump to insert mode. One more thing is how to jump to the beginning and to the end. And for this we can use Shift and then L and then I'm jumping to the end of the line or Shift and then H and then I'm jumping to the beginning of the line. If we do some changes inside the file, as you can see it is highlighted red, we want to save it. This is why I'm hitting here space and then S. And the last thing that I want to show you is search. Let's say that we're searching for some stuff inside this specific file. For example, for delete article. I want to hit here star and as you can see this word is highlighted. Now here I want to just hit N and it will jump to the next occurrence of this function inside this file. As you can see nothing happened because I have just a single occurrence inside file. But let's just copy this line with yank and paste it several times and now as you can see every single word delete article is highlighted. Now I can just hit N, N, N and I'm jumping between every single occurrence here. And it is extremely comfortable because you have this highlighting between buffers, which actually means I can jump inside our TS file and here delete article is also highlighted, which means here for example if I'm somewhere on the top, I can just hit N and I'm directly inside this function. So these were the keybinds that I'm using inside Vim every single day. And if you have some custom keybinds that you want to share, just write them in the description box below. And actually, if you are interested to learn more about my Vim configuration, make sure to check this video also.